Hello and welcome to the 2023 preview of the Duke's Ryder Cup. I know that there are a lot of different sporting events happening in the near future. We've got the MLB All-Star Game happening. We've got the British Open happening in a couple weeks. But we know that most of the sports world is locked in on July 15th at Springfield Country Club because that is when two groups of 10 golfers will embark on one of the most prestigious trophies of all time going head to head against the other matchup that they have in front of them to try to bring home the trophy and to be drinking whiskey at Tavola's out of that trophy in the loser's face. I am your host, Phil Eastman. And on this YouTube video, we are going to be taking a look at everything that has happened so far and then the matchups. This is not selecting who I think is going to win the matchup, just breaking down the storylines and the drama as we come up to Saturday because we are less than a week away from the Ryder Cup. So we are excited to have you with, with us. Thank you for tuning in. And to start, we have to dig into how we got here because once we had our set of 20 golfers, we needed to find out who were going to be the captains, and two phoenixes rose from the ashes to try to step up. It takes a certain type of person to be able to lead a team in this Ryder Cup atmosphere. It takes leadership. It takes courage. It takes a lot, and we got lucky enough to have two great captains because what we've seen so far out of these guys has been nothing short of excellence. So the captains of the 2023 Ryder Cup through the email chain. Some names got nominated and sorted everything out. After everything got settled, it was Jeff Moore and Shane Dunphy as our captains, as you see there. And this was something that we were very excited about because these two might be the best shit talkers in the game, whether it's on the ice or at work or on the golf course. These two guys bring it no matter what. There are no off days. They are never off. They are always on when it comes to the witty comebacks and the shit talking. So we knew going in, this was going to be a great situation. Now, the way this worked was we had a draft at Duke's now named O'Connell's. And uh, these two had a task that night. They had to select from the remaining names. So 18 names, uh, nine rounds, essentially going back and forth, picking their squads. After that, they had to sit down and negotiate the tee times. And what they were trying to do was set up two golfers on each team per tee time. So essentially, we're going to have five sets of 2v2 scrambles. And they these guys did not disappoint that night. During the actual draft, they were, you know, wheeling you could see the wheels turning in their heads trying to make the right decision at every turn and then after that the fireworks really got started because these two wouldn't give an inch it was a negotiation for the ages to the point where no one wanted to budge at all i think the funniest quote of the night was um jeff saying shane why don't you like that and he said because you do like it i mean that's the level of intensity that these two captains are bringing to the table and it's just fantastic to see so they were able to you know bring it and they have their teams, two teams of 10. They negotiated. We've got the matchups and the rosters that we're going to take a look at. But I reached out to the captains to try to get a comment, just something on the record, you know, to see if there was anything uh, they would like to add to this preview video. Shane Dumpf, he responded first with a couple of different things. Uh, first thing he sent me in classic dunk fashion was uh, – you know, a, a video. He sent me a link. I click on the link and then you know what it was. It was the Sidney Crosby. I don't like them video. And for anyone who. I don't like anyone on their team. And that uh, really sums up a good, you know, mantra for their squad heading into it. Another thing that he said after that to me was. Uh, I'm trying to pull this up right now. He said that I think I equate JMO's golf game to that of Matt Wolf. And for anyone who's not caught up on the golf drama this week uh, on the live tour, Brooks Kepka came out and commented on somebody named Matt Wolf, who is on his own team and said, I mean, 
when you quit on your round, you give up and stuff like that. That's not competing. I'm not a big fan of that. You don't work hard. It's very tough. It's very tough to even have that type of team dynamic when you got one guy that won't work, one guy who is not going to give effort. He's going to quit on the course, break clubs, gets down, bad body language. It's very tough. I've given up on him. That's referring to Matt Wolf. So that's who Dumpf is equating JMO to on the golf course, which was uh, very interesting. And JMO, he responded, and in typical JMO fashion, he went tit for tat, basically almost everyone on their squad making comments. So as we get to the matchup preview, I'll I'll throw in my little JMO tidbit that he sent me. But to start, he said about about Dumpf. I know he's the captain, but the closest thing he'll ever see to a real C on his chest is when he throws on his Lindros jerseys to go to bed and jerks himself off to sleep every night. So. Some shots fired from the boys right off the start. That's what we want to see in some captains. Just absolute, um, really cutting comments by these guys at one another. And that's what we expected. The the tail of the tape, it's as advertised. These guys are going to bring it. And I can't wait to see what it's going to be like on Saturday. So like I said, JMO commented on a bunch of guys. And when we get to the rosters here in just a second, I'll make sure I add in anybody that he talks about along the way. So. With that, let's get to the rosters here and just give you a quick lay of the land, and then we're going to break down each matchup specifically. So there you see the lay of the land. We're starting at 8.48 a.m., and we're going to go all the way down to 9.36, almost a full hour worth of tea time situations, Um, and that is what we're getting into there. So team more on the left-hand column, team dump on the right-hand side of your page. So you see – Really good breakdown. These two guys did a great job at the draft itself. But let's start to get into the individual matchups here. And we're going to start with uh, the marquee matchup. And this is Jeff Moore and Dumpf going head to head here. So this is the group one preview, the marquee matchup. And you got to love this because when you're the captain, you get to choose really everything about what happens on Saturday. You get to choose, you know, who's playing with who, who you're playing with, what time people are teeing off, what time you're teeing off. And it's kind of tradition that the captains face off against each other. And so they kept that tradition alive this time around, despite the fact that Dumpf, you know, we've got a score sheet that everyone put their scores into to try to say, you know, how good you are to make it more fair. Dumpf is a better golfer than JMO. I mean, that's just what the stats say. So for Jeff to go, you know, toe to toe, we needed to be able to balance the teams out. Now, Dumpf went with Brian Falzone, who typically, I think, on a year to year basis is a better golfer than JMO, but he's kind of now the guy matched up with Jeff in this kind of on a diagonal here. If you're looking at it, Falzone uh, going toe to toe for JMO to try to even things out. And Jeff had a comment about fouls. He said, this guy sent me a text last night trying to talk shit because he hit a three foot putt on mini golf course down the shore. He said, this is a routine stroke and borderline gimme for my three-year-old who happens to be fouls godson. If that's what's getting you jacked up, good luck on Saturday. So fouls getting excited about hitting three foot mini golf putts. Um, that's a little embarrassing as JMO is calling out. Now, potentially the sleeper in this draft, Ryan DeCheco. Okay, he is now elevated to the marquee match, match number one, and he was drafted in the mid rounds. And we've been seeing his Instagram posts this past week throwing in mid 80s on vacation. I mean, come on. We were down in Myrtle Beach with a a lot of the guys that are in this tournament, this Ryder Cup check being one of them. And he performed extremely well in that tournament. So uh, we are expecting big things from Ryan DeCecco. We needed somebody on team more to kind of balance out the fact that Dumpf is a typical like high eighties player and DeCecco is being tapped on the shoulder to be able to match Dumpf. Those two DeCecco and Dumphy were actually teammates last year in a weird situation where those two were paired up against a single who was the number one pick in the draft and they wiped the floor with him. So former teammates now enemies heading into this group one matchup. I think this is awesome because, you know, to go off on group one, there's a little bit of nerves because you are out there hitting your first tee shot in front of everyone in the tournament, 16 other uh, golfers there, theoretically, and uh, just a, a lot of 
you know, good vibes there by these guys putting themselves off first. They get to watch everyone come in on 18. So um, really awesome matchup here to kick the day off on Saturday. So now we will move to the group two preview. And this is the nine o'clock tea time. And this is just a wild one. Okay. So for team more, it's Rob Burns and Adam Garling versus Dave Lucy and Matt Sheeran. I don't even know where to start with this one. We'll go from left to right. Team Moore, I mean, we want to talk about good vibes. Uh, Burnsy and Garling, I think last year, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, these two guys were the drunkest human beings in the vicinity. Uh, they were after it. And I just remember Rob Burns, you know, really he Ubered in from Allentown. Like the guy's a maniac and he's going to be doing the same thing this time, planes, trains, and automobiles to get him into this tournament. Um, so a little bit, you know, you got to make sure his nerves are calmed down for that first tee shot. But you know, once you get going now, Burns is a little bit of mystery because as we you know, mentioned, we asked people to enter their scores in to give the captains a sense of how good people are. Burns, he didn't put anything in. So we're not sure really what he's bringing to the table this year. Garland, we kind of know his situation. 100 was his average uh, score that we put in. And, you know, down in Myrtle Beach, the, the Beast Open, that was pretty much what he brought to the table there. His scouting report remains the same. He was pretty impressive, kind of surprising golfer through about 15 holes. And then when the alcohol catches up, it's, you know, j- good night, Jim Kite, as they say. So um, if they can kind of hold on and get off to a decent start before the alcohol kicks in for both of them, then they might be in good shape and be able to take three points on the other two now let's go to the other two because we start here with dave lucy who continues to be a bit of an enigma um he sometimes shocks everyone with how good he plays he's done that numerous times in this event just kind of being underestimated and then you know the match comes in or the the foursome comes into 18 and saying yeah dave shot lights out uh so that is just you never know what you're going to get a you know forrest gump box of chocolates type of thing and uh you know, it's going to be the same again this year. So we had a, a comment from Captain Moore on Dave, and he said the last round I played with him, he left after hole nine on arguably one of the top three courses he's ever played his entire life. So, uh, yeah, there's that. So the other thing, a, a very interesting thing here, this is strategy. You got to consider the captain's strategy here. Team Dumpf, uh, Captain Dumpf, putting Dave out at the nine o'clock tea time, group two, very interesting move. Will it pay off for him? Uh, we're not even sure if Dave knows when the match is, uh, let alone the time. And he's notoriously late. So if a group or a, a golfer doesn't make their tee time and makes the group behind them go ahead of them, that is a two stroke penalty um, to start the day. So very risky not having him at the latest tee time. That's what I think most people thought he was going to have Dave doing. Not the case. Now, we'll see. And the other thing is, how much money will Dave be spending at the pro shop when he eventually does get there? Now, we're looking at Matt Sheeran. He's being paired up with Dave. Um, So Sheeran's going to have to bring the good vibes to kind of match what's going on on the other side. And, you know, Sheeran, from my recollection, is a very good complimentary player. He's not going to be the guy to carry the team. He's really going to need Dave to show up on time and shoot really well in order to kind of keep up with the two on the other side and you put Sheeran in a good position to make a play he can do it so that's where we're at with group two so uh, a lot of storylines there for group two now you want to talk about storylines let's go to group three this is my group the 9 12 tea time team more it's myself and chad porsche taking on team dumps von mondi and greg johnson uh, i know this group well all three of these guys are were in my bridal party at our wedding and the two guys that i'm facing were my best men uh von and greg there so we'll start with uh, myself selfishly i'll go first here to kind of break down because typically i would say i you know i live for this type of thing 2v2 scrambles that's my bread and butter especially with chad as a partner he and i have had a lot of success I am coming off. I'm currently dealing with a rib injury uh, where, you know, hurt my ribs playing hockey, possibly fractured, not sure. And the doctors were saying about four to six weeks and it's very painful. Never had a rib injury before, but I am still in quite a bit of pain and we're only a few days away. Talk to someone who had the same exact injury as me, who had the same exact dilemma, a Ryder Cup type event. 
And he was saying, look, I, I think you're going to be able to swing the club, but it's the contact on the ball that's the problem. So it's all about just manning up and being able to fight through it because you're not going to hurt it worse. So it's a mental thing for me. Luckily, we don't do drug tests for this event. Uh, be able to, you know, kind of numb the pain and use some alcohol to get through it as well. But if I'm able to, you know, play to my potential, I'm feeling good about the fact that I've got my partner, Chad Porsche. We've been, like I said, partners before. He has been dealing with some driver issues so far this year. He was planning on, you know, going to the range and trying to work some stuff out. Just got word in today. He got out onto the golf course at his country club and was able to shoot a 94. That's encouraging and gave his driver game a B minus, which is a big time upgrade. So Chad Porsche potentially working some things out. That's what you want in this type of event. Um, if you were Jeff Moore and drafting this guy, you like to hear that. Now, on the other side, you want to talk about consistency. Von Mondi. I mean, he hasn't really been out to the course so much this year dealing with you know a, a bunch of you know kids at home and uh family events and just everything just being you know captain dad well his golf game hasn't struggled down in myrtle he you know struggled on the first day i think he went like four over his score and then bounced back the last two days to finish uh in the third round in the final group and really made a run for the championship so vaughn just kind of steady eddie and uh i think that's what we can you know, expect here in this matchup is out of all four of these guys, Vaughn being kind of a cornerstone, as you know what you're going to get with him, he's going to come up with some big shots and he's going to, you know, if he does falter, rely on Greg Johnson. Now, Greg, in these types of events, he will come up with a big shot that really saves a hole and then gives momentum moving forward. Greg, though, has played very little golf and we're not really sure what to expect. We're not sure if Greg has that, you know, steady Eddie uh, ability in him like his teammate coming off of just having a brand new baby and he's on paternity leave i think he's played one round of golf and it was a outing like a you know for some outing type event so we're not really sure you know what he has in his bag going into this season we know that he can shit talk with the best of them uh so that's going to be a, a major element team dump for captain dump from the moment his roster was set, the first pairing that he put together was Vaughn and Greg. He knew that he wanted those two together from the jump. So J-Mo, you know, leaned on Chad and I and said, yeah, we can we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. So uh, interesting that Dunf wanted these guys together right off the bat. And, you know, he, he fished his wish there. Now, J-Mo had some comments on both of these guys. He said, Vaughn has too much female testosterone running through that household. Let's put him from the red tees and see how he does. For Greg... He said, it's a shame he will never make it to the Nantucket family vacation and will always be on the outside looking in. At this point, he might have a better shot of getting an invite uh, than Greg. So uh, really cutting to the core there for J-Mo on those two guys. So uh, that's the matchup, 9-12. And we talk about, you know, golf. My, my partner, Chad, always says golf is a comfort sport. J-Mo has put him in a perfect position putting him with me as his partner, playing against two guys that he really enjoys being uh, you know, matched up with and sticking us in the right in the dead center of the group. We are blocked off from the outside world uh, 100%. So it's comfort all around for the 912 tee time. So now we will move on to the group four matchup here. And this is Sean Rogers and Adam Porsche for JMO taking on TJ Schneider and Ant Scales. What? a situation to break down this is just a pleasure to be able to talk about this so rogers was the number one overall pick in this draft so you know jmo had that and went with rogers over tj don't follow that right back up with tj so in the matchup pairings and when they were working on the teams it was pretty much a consensus that we want those two guys playing against each other um, so we want one and two playing head to head and see what they got so then it was a situation of, well, who are they going to be paired with? And they kind of went with more of a opposite end of the spectrum. Um, Adam and Ant were both drafted towards the bottom of the rounds here. Uh, I know Ant was the last pick in the draft, and that's not a shot at Ant. He would, you know, not take any offense to that. Ant is here to burn the good vibes, to have fun with his buddies, and to provide support for his teammate. And the fact that Dumpf has him teamed up with his good buddy, TJ, is a fantastic move by Dumpf. Those two are going to be able to vibe off of each other. Now, I will say this about TJ. Back in the day when the Ryder Cup was a 
four-man scramble with A, B, C, D players. I was in TJ's group, hole number three at Springfield. I watched TJ eagle that hole by himself. If he brings that level of intensity, that level of talent to this matchup, he will be in really good shape with Ant as his partner because he's not going to need Ant to step up in a big way. Now, we will say if you know we're a little unsure about how TJ's golf game has been recently, um, Ant you know, sometimes can struggle getting off the tee, and we do need everyone to have a tee shot accounted for on each of the nine holes. Um, and to that point, JMO had something to say about it. He said, Ant scales the over-under for yardage off the tee for all 18 holes is 299 yards, and he is on the under. Um, and so that is, uh, you know, a little cutting there as well from JMO. And for TJ, he said, I'm expecting a mental lapse when he doesn't have Fry to hold him together. He does have Ant, though, so we'll see. Now, on the other side, very interesting dynamic here. First of all, the number one overall pick in the Ryder Cup has never performed well. I don't know what it is, if it's the pressure or what, but they have never really performed well in their matchup. So Rodgers has that on him this year, and he's teamed up with Adam the Goon Porsche, who those two were partners. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but we had some talk at the table. It was not from Goon. It was not from me or anybody. This was news to me that there were some rumors uh, when they were partnered up before Rogers was uh, kind of treating things more of like an individual sport, not really like a team element to it, uh, which, you know, Hey, that's, that's saying something that's maybe trying to stir the pot a little bit. I don't know. But at the end of the day, if these two are able to come together as a team and play efficiently, pick each other up when the other one's down, then uh, they're going to be in really good shape because I know that Adam's been playing like high to mid nineties and Rogers plays golf all the time. He's probably playing another 18 after this event's over. So, you know, you know that he's going to be Mr. Consistent. Um, so this is a hell of a matchup here in group four. So now let's go to the group five. This is the last one of the day and just an absolutely phenomenal group to bring us in because there's so many storylines here as well. Nine thirty six. This is going to be the last group coming eight, up 18. They'll probably know exactly what they need to do when they get to that 18th green. And for Team Dumpf, just an absolutely phenomenal job by Dumpf putting Dan Lucy in this group. Dan Lucy, I have to check with my statisticians, but he has never lost, I'm 99% sure, never lost a matchup in the Ryder Cup. And I can attest to his magic from a couple of years ago, being his partner, playing up against some good pairing, and he chipped in from the sand on 17 to clinch the match for us. It was just an unbelievable uh, feeling to witness that and be a part of that. So that's the kind of stuff you're getting with Dan Lucy, just pure leadership. You're going to be able to have kind of a cool head at the back of this group, uh, back of our group, because you know that we're going to be holding up this goddamn course. And you're going to need some guys back there to, you know, kind of calm the, the strangers behind us. Now, he's teamed up with Patrick John and PJ from the word on the street has just been absolutely bombing it off the tee box. So that's uh, pretty interesting to hear where, you know, PJ has been a former captain. He's never really been a high draft pick in these events, but if he's going to be bombing it off the tee, you're going to be setting up Dan, Dan Lucy for a good situation there. Now we do have some uh, comments from JMO on both of these guys. He said, Dan Lucy talked a big game about never losing a Ryder cup matchup. Saturday will be his first. I strongly suspect PJ will be carrying his ass all day. His brother and current teammate Dave has questioned his scoring integrity in the past. His words, not mine. That was the quote from JMO. And then for PJ, he said, it's tough to critique PJ, a fellow Andrew Road neighbor, but I don't see him being able to handle Fry and Munt on a big stage. And this really is a big stage. Now, let's talk about Fry and Munt because I'll tell you this. We know what we're getting with Munter, okay? He's a mid-90s golfer down in Myrtle Beach, you know, kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start and then uh, found his way, found his footing a little bit and was really um, performing, you know, quite well on day three. And, you know, you kind of what you see is what you get if he can hold it together. Now, he has had a Munner meltdown from here and there in the past. We've seen club throws. We've seen yelling or heard yelling from across the course. But it's been a little while since we've seen that sort of thing. And he's matured since then. So I think this is a more of a consistent, you know, situation here for Munner. You know what you're getting for him as a golfer. Now, the biggest question mark in the entire event 
Jared Fry. We saw him get drafted fifth. I think a lot of people thought that was a steal for J-Mo. You separated him and TJ, took away that opportunity to play TJ and Fry together. And we're just not sure what we're getting with Fry. In the past, he's been an absolute stud golfer, just absolute bona fide uh, maniac out there. And now, after surgery, after, you know, kind of hanging up the, the hockey skates, we haven't seen him in a while, kind of a mysterious situation here. He said that he hasn't really been playing all that much after the, the text went out, after the rosters were chosen. So if he's a, a anywhere near what he has been in the past, then this matchup will be extremely entertaining. If he's lackluster, that's really going to give the advantage, you know, blood in the water for Dan Lucy at that point. So, um, and I think I spelled his name wrong, so I better take care of that. There we go. Um, so Fry is a big time question mark in this situation. But if he can come through, this team is in good shape. The other thing that Ryder Cup fans were wondering were, will JMO and Fry be able to squash the beef from Ryder Cup past where Fry ran a golf cart into JMO's car? They squashed it as soon as he made that pick. He said, you know, water under the bridge. And uh, now Fry is aiming his golf cart to, you know, somebody else's car on team dump. So just an absolute slobber knocker to bring us in on 18 and finish off the fifth group final group there an unbelievable event set up here for saturday i know that a lot of people out there that are not playing are going to be interested feel free to let us know in the comments or send text to whoever you want to send let us know who you got which team team jmo or team dump who's looking stronger in your eyes we would love to hear it going in to the weekend and feel free to stop up at Tavola's to chirp everyone or cheer everyone as they come up 18 on July 15th at Springfield Country Club. So that's the breakdown for the Dukes Ryder Cup in 2023. We'll see what happens on the course.